You might be too young for the Kumite, but you're never too old to collect an action figure. Here's a look at the brand new Diamond Select JCVD Jean-Claude Van Damme Deluxe Action Figure. Born Jean-Claude Camille Francois Van Varenberg in Belgium, Jean-Claude Van Damme began studying karate at the age of 10, earning his black belt at 18 and joining the Belgium national team. He also studied ballet and lifted weights, eventually earning the bodybuilding title Mr. Belgium. He competed in full contact karate until 1982 when he moved to the United States to become an actor. After a few background parts and a villainous leading role, he began a series of starring roles and cemented him as a leading man. He has also written and directed films. This deluxe action figure of Jean-Claude Van Dam features over 20 points of articulation for maximum posability, as well as multiple interchangeable parts. Ah, you must be Frank Dux. Just before, of course, we get a closer look at the brand new Jean-Claude Van Damme action figure, courtesy of the folks over at Diamond Select in USA. Okay, USA. I'd like to grab the tape measure first and see how tall the figure actually stands. While I'm doing this as well, I'd like to send out a big shout out to a friend of mine, Waleed. Hopefully he's watching. Jean-Claude Van Damme stands at six and a quarter inches in height, or the figure's 16 centimeters tall. Though not directly based on Frank Dukes from Bloodsport, there is definitely some heavily influenced Bloodsport-style accessories that come include Van Damme here. Primarily the splitting chairs that Jackson walks into the hotel room and sees Frank Dukes spread across. We're going to get more to those in a moment. The figure also comes included with a couple of bottles of various damages. One is a fully intact bottle. It looks to be probably empty. And then there's one that's actually smashed with the bottom end of it off to the side as well. Now, I'm not sure the referencing why they included this. We're not talking necessarily about kickboxer Muay Thai and Tong Paul, where, of course, they would have smashed their hands in the broken glass. But he gets a couple of broken bottles, needless to say. I would have rather instead if they actually had included, like the boards, for example, the dim muck or the touch of death that Van Damme would have to break through if, of course, he was the House of Tanaka. That would have been a nice little included touch, the actual stack board that he had to actually... No, no, the bottom one he had to break. I think that would have been a much rather interesting accessory than including necessarily bottles. But you get a couple of those also as well. He has also, too, a couple of gripping hands. So if you wanted to put the bottles in his hand like he's ready to smash it over top of somebody's head, you can also do that as well. The figure, all having already holding one of them, the figure also comes included with like a pair of gripping hands. So, of course, the only really other accessories that he has is really, again, just those bottles. So you can have the figure displayed with those instead. He also comes included with a couple of sparring hands, ideally suitable if you want to have Van Damme again split across the chairs. You can have the figure displayed, as I did at the beginning of this review, with these also instead. The figure also has closed fists, which you probably can already currently see on the ends of his forearms. He also has off to the side here a, a clear acrylic adjustable display stand that you can actually attach onto the back of the figure's body. Sure, yes, he does the splits across the chairs, but not in a way that he can balance on his own, at least not that I've been able to find. But he does have instead, though, a display stand. I'm sure we have seen the stand before, probably with their Nightmare Before Christmas figures. Probably Jack Skellington had something of a similar stand to this. It's a clear circular stand with one peg to the side that can actually plug into only really one of Van Damme's feet, as he only has, well, he has one peg, two feet. He also has, again, like the adjustable neck, which you actually have several of these. So you have the slightly smaller one, and there's a knuckle joint attaching either end of it. Then you can also attach this part to it, or you can also go for the full effect of attaching all three of them, and you have a much longer neck. Now, unfortunately, though, with the support of this, there's no way you'd be able to get Van Damme in a helicopter kick. Just wouldn't be able to pull that off. But you could get somewhat similar, maybe in a slight, well, one of his foot is maybe up, for example. That might be one way of displaying the figure. It's kind of got an interesting way, actually, the way that you can do the splits for Van Damme. We'll just put him right off to the side here just for one second, and we'll just move the stand over here. We're going to come back to this more in a moment. The figure also comes included with the gestured expression head sculpt. This looks to me like when Chung Lee, for example, throws the dust in his eyes and he gets blinded, and he can't quite see what's going on in the finale of the Kumite. Again, this would just be a case of swapping out with the existing head that he has right now. Uh, one thing I will say, though, about the head and the way that it's been painted. I think it looks good, but I think the skin color is way too pale. Again, this is only loosely based, I feel, on Bloodsport, especially with the Kumite style of outfit that he's wearing. But I think like the coloring, especially if they were to base it more closer to that movie, Van Damme would have kind of more of a darker coloring to his skin tone. Very similar more to like a tan. I feel like the figure's 
body is a little too pale. That's the only thing I would say, certainly, about it when it comes to the paint job. Head sculpt is pretty good. I mean, it, it passes enough, I feel, the likeness of Van Damme. From all the sides, you can kind of already know the character that this figure is based from. But, like, again, with the two different head sculpts, and especially for the rest of his body, I do feel, if anything, the coloring for his skin is maybe a little tad too pale. Head sculpt, again, for this one is pretty good. I mean, you're looking at it from the side... You know, there could be probably an opportunity where maybe just the paint may have let the sculpting down just a little bit. But I think still looking at it, I know exactly who the character is. Now, again, if you want to change the head sculpt, we're going to come back and do this just a little bit later. It's just a case of popping this head off from, of course, the provided peg and swap it out with this one instead. Watch, you don't know, kick the referee, whatever you do. Now, if you did want to put this guy with the provided chairs, we're just going to put the figure down here for a second. He comes with what seems to be matching chairs, if I don't drop actually the other one. You can see that the way they've sculpted the chairs, there's actually a little permanent indentation to these that actually support the bottom of Van Damme's legs. Now, I have yet been able to actually get Van Damme splitting across these, balancing just on the legs alone. But then, of course, you can bring back in the display stand. I'll do that more in a second. And again, to go back, and if we really were to nickel and dime the source material on this, Van Damme would have actually been straddled across two sort of wicker-style chairs with slightly lighter colored seats. Now, again, they kind of gave us the suggestion of what chairs could look like from that film, without actually directly pointing the finger at that. And maybe that's one of the reasons why they didn't include the dumb mock uh, style of boards, just because, again, it would be too heavily, you know, close to the original source material. Now, the chairs themselves, what's neat about them is, all well, again, they've molded them nicely. Even, like, the under padding here, you can actually even see the boards that make up the chair. So, like, they look good from all the sides. There's nothing really that looks unfinished to the chairs themselves. We're just putting it off to the side. We'll kind of quickly go back to looking at Van Damme. Van Damme's nicely sculpted overall with his chest. I did notice, though, getting the figure out of the packaging, that his torso was really tight. I had to actually take a few passes with a hairdryer just to soften this up, and it still feels like it's super tight. But again, I would much rather tight joints than overly loose joints. Van Damme doesn't have that at all. Still, he has sort of the, the, the Kumite style of trunks that he would have had in the film, without again directly pointing at the movie itself. He's got the little sash there off to the side as well. And the neat thing really about the figure is the fact that he can also possess a split. It isn't just the case that you're splitting the legs like this. What you actually have to do instead, and I think this was kind of clever the way that they did this, they hinged it in such a way that one is stacked on top of the other. Can you see that? So now actually, instead of having it just a straight bar across and then these attached by ball joints, they actually layered the pegs. So this one here, for example, is a little bit lower than this one here to the side. And they actually have just, if I get my finger out of the way, they just stacked the pegs on top of one another. Now, if you want to get Van Damme in a splits, that's as far as he can actually go until, though, you drop the legs. The legs themselves normally in their default would be up like this close to his body. But if you drop them down just a little bit on both sides, now Van Damme can do a full splits. I'm just going to split them off on either side. You can also as well rotate them. There seems to be, and I'm going to talk more about this when we talk about the post billy on the figure, there seems to be a swivel right here for the leg, but I can't get it to budge. What I'll do, though, instead, so that Van Damme's feet are sticking upright like this, you can actually tw twist the thighs around and have Van Damme doing the splits this way. Then what you'll do is, I've noticed, the proper length is just attaching this one. And we'll also take the top part off here. Now we're also going to remove this knuckle joint. And I find the sweet spot is actually the one that's not the longest, not the shortest, but the one right in the middle, the baby bear peg. Plug that on one end, plug this on the other end, just like that. And then if you angle the knuckle joint, the little hinge joint right there, you can actually go on the back of Van Damme's body, and there's a hole right there. You just plug it on the back. may have to involve actually a little bit of wiggling back and forth. But once you get that properly in place, there we go. You can get Van Damme, obviously, you're going to have to put him on the chairs themselves. But again, like you've got that little groove right there, so you can get Van Damme on one side, bring the leg then around on the other side. And as we did at the beginning of the review, you can actually have Van Damme straddle the chairs. Now, obviously, this would look a lot nicer as well if you can actually get the hands popped off. You know what? We might actually even just do that as well. Just take the hands from the provided peg, just remove them. Take the sparring hands or the meditation hands. We'll just plug those in place and we'll just bring the hand up slightly. Kind of similar to, again, like he would have had in the movie. And again, we'll just take his legs and straddle them across the chairs. Now, without really having, again, that clear acrylic stand, I've tried to do it without the stand, and it just doesn't seem to work. He just, because he's further back on the seats, he ends up falling backwards. But again, like, I really like the way that they've actually decided to include this as something as an included accessory. Sure, yes, the broken boards would have worked also really well as well for the touch of death, but I do appreciate the fact that, Neca that I do appreciate the fact that Diamond Select would have included the accessories that they did. As for the figure's articulation, let's go ahead and move everything out of the way here. 
We're going to detach the peg here on the parotid hole on the back of his body. We're going to just bring his legs back, back down sort of to the defaulted pose. And maybe while we're also at it too, let's go ahead and remove Van Damme's head, which is actually fairly easy to remove from the ball joint. Uh, they've made enough at least clearance on the underside of his, his head cavity, so it's very easy to pop the new head in place. Just pop it in place. Although I did honestly heat this up just with a little bit of hot water, but I don't really think I even necessarily needed to. Just a little bit of pressure, you can get it right in place. So now that's again like the shocked look on his face. You know, again, while he's blinded and he's trying to swing through the air. Again, a good looking head sculpt. The only thing, again, I would say is like the coloring of his skin, I feel, is just a little too light. For the articulation on the figure, the head's going to be on, once again, that ball joint, so it rotates all the way around. It looks up, without, of course, removing the head in the process. It looks up, it looks down, and you can also move it back and forth. I want to just make sure I get it all the way on there. As for the upper torso, even though I did have problems with it earlier, I've loosened it up enough that I can actually move it back and forth now. It moves up, it moves down. There's also a waist swivel, too, which is good to see. The arms themselves rotate all the way around. That's the same on this side as well. As for his arms, you can also bring them out comfortably at 90 degrees. Van Damme also do, does have a swivel in his bicep, a double hinge on the elbow, and the hands do as well rotate all the way around. Uh, the legs also do. As you can already see, you can move them forward, you can move them back. But again, if you want to get the splits or you want to get Van Damme to a higher kick, you just bring those legs a little bit further down. They easily sock it back in place. It's not like you're actually breaking anything. Just drop them down. You can bring them forward. You can bring them back. Again, you can do the full splits by bringing those down. Smart that Diamond did do that. Still, though, looking at this and feeling my finger around it, it feels like there's a cut into the thigh. And yet, though, I can't swivel it. I've tried heating this and still yielded the same results. I'm going to see if I can heat this again, because I feel like the way that that's cut in, there should be a swivel, which might also be the reasoning why that if you have him splits, for example, the way I had to do it, at least with his feet angled upward like this, you would only then see the very ugly peg holes on the inside, the ball joints. So I'm sure that that's the reason if there was a swivel, they would have put the swivel there. So you can actually bring the legs out this way swivel this upright and then again you'd have the leg facing or the feet facing upright like this uh, again with not having that being able something i can swivel the knees do at least do, have a double hinge on there so you can bend, bend those back and forth there's an ankle pivot here on his feet and you can also ankle rock them as well for a first-time figure of a Van Damme, I mean, the figure, I think, looks good. I think Diamond's done a decent job on him. I mean, yes, there still could have been a feel and opportunity. Maybe they could have improved upon the paint just a little bit. Because, again, like in the movie, I don't feel like if we were, again, looking at this, looking at this and saying, okay, well, this figure's based on Bloodsport, even though it does actually say Bloodsport anywhere on the packaging. If I was to base it on that, I would say Frank Dukes in the movie is a little bit more darker of a color than he is depicted here. I think the likeness still lands a decent-looking Van Damme. I do like they, they included the accessories. To be all honest and fair, I don't think I'm ever going to display the figure with the bottles. I just don't feel like that was a good included accessory. Dim mock. I mean, the board that he has to break in order to prove that he was part of House Tanaka, I think would have made a lot more sense to include that. But maybe again, that was too close on the nose. Maybe it'd be looked too much like Bloodsport that they decided not to include that as part of the figure's accessories. While the idea of a helicopter kicking Van Damme would be impossible to pull off with a figure like this, not that he wouldn't be able to do it, but just with the weight of the plastic on the figure, there's no way the weaker adjustable neck would be able to support the weight. With at least the splits being capable, you can at least get a higher kick for Van Damme that's really going to look good on the shelf. In fact, actually the way it attaches on the back of his body, the adjustable neck that is, it lines up perfectly with his feet then attaching onto the post that's on the front of the display stand. I may not have the figure displayed like this on the shelf, but it's certainly a strong contender for one of the ways that you can display him. While he's not, again, directly based on Bloodsport, I think it was the case that they probably didn't have the licensing to use the Bloodsport directly. There's enough still thrown in there. While those chairs don't resemble the ones that he, we see in the movie, they at least are chairs that he can split across. While he's not wearing a Kumite-specific kind of trunks, they're close enough, at least in color scheme, that you know exactly what movie this is supposed to be. And while I think the likeness is close enough for resembling Van Damme, I think, if anything, maybe the paint is the one thing that maybe lets this figure down just a little bit, darkening up the colors on him, because he, he's very pale, the way they presented this figure, and maybe that's one of the things that may have helped also the likeness looking a little bit more like Van Damme himself. What do you guys think of the Jean-Claude Van Damme action figure? Is this one that you guys could see yourselves picking up? I think Diamond's actually planning to do more of these, so I'm definitely on board to get more Van Damme, not only with the statues that they've been doing so well with, but also as well for possibly future articulated figures. Also, let me know down below in the comments section, what's your favorite Jean-Claude Van Damme? Top three, top three, let's go. My top three, I would still say is probably 
Universal Soldier, Time Cop, and gotta throw in the classic Bloodsport. But what's yours? Let me know down below. Big thank you once again to the folks over at Diamond Select that were kind enough to provide this sample we could have a look at. If you guys certainly did enjoy this video, I want to throw it a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly want to stick around for more Van Damage, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on the bell notification. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.